Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at something called the Windows 98 Ultimate Boot CD uh, or UBCD is what it's called. Uh, this was actually sent to me um, by a viewer over on my form site osforms.net by the name of uh, Hank H-E-N-K 717. Uh, I do want to give a huge thank you to him for offering, you know, to send this over to me, as well as offering a few other software packages that he thought would be pretty cool um, to showcase on video, and I'm probably going to be, you know, doing some of those as well. Uh, you can see here that he wrote out this very nice long PM here with, you know, a very detailed uh, description of each one of these programs, so you can kind of see what we might be getting into, you know, in some future videos here. But what I want to focus on today is this one down here called the Windows 98 UBCD, which I assume stands for Ultimate Boot CD, but I'm not sure, um, from February 2008. So basically what this is from what, you know, that he kind of wrote down here uh, is a version of Windows 98, obviously very unofficial. This was not done by Microsoft at all. Um, that a, you know, little group of modders or maybe, you know, like a large group of modders got together to kind of create... Um, a modern-ish version of Windows 98 in 2008 uh, with like some more, you know, like some more updates and some more software uh, and some more themes. I mean, you can see here we have a like sort of like a mix between a Windows XP and a Windows Vista theme. And you still have some Windows 98 uh, elements in here as well. You see you have most of the Windows 98 icons, but you have um, this background here, which was like from one of the Longhorn betas. And you have this... Um, very nice themed taskbar on here, which kind of reminds me of Windows Vista. Um, and he says that it's a that it's a you know very interesting um, you know like piece of software uh, like I guess software package, and it actually does some very interesting stuff through the installation. Um, you can see that he you know says right on here that this disk features community patches that bring Windows 98 to a more modern era, adding support for newer systems and some of the Windows XP applications. Um, so yeah, this is going to be very cool. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what this is all about. Um, and he did mention in a, another PM that he would, um, you know, want to see kind of how it would be, you know, like how that the Windows 98, you know, the $5 Windows 98 PC that I've showcased in many videos. I actually have a whole playlist, I believe, with the $5 Windows 98 PC. Um, he thought it would be cool if I did the video on that rather than doing it in a virtual machine to kind of see... Um, how it works on real hardware, and I thought, yeah, that's a great idea, because I usually do these, uh, like, unofficial Windows things in a virtual machine, uh, but since this one was kind of designed for real hardware, you know, to be used on a Windows 98 computer, I thought, why not try it on the Windows 98 computer that I have? So that's you know, what we're going to be doing. I've already burned uh, a CD with a software on it, and we're going to be switching over to um, the Windows 98 PC momentarily here, and I'm going to kind of go through the installation process on there. Um, but again, I just do want to give a huge thank you to Hank717 again for sending this out, you know, to me or, you know, basically offering to send the file over to me. And yeah, that is pretty much all that I have to say. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my camcorder now and we're going to, you know, go ahead and end, uh, start the installation process on the $5.98 PC. Alright, so we are back here on the $5.98 PC uh, once again, and you can see it is right where that I left it off last time when we did the uh, Windows XP Vienna video. So it's literally uh, still on Vienna. I haven't really done much else to it. Um, but today we're going to be once again installing another version of Windows on here, which I've done so many times. Uh, I always have to end up reinstalling Windows 98 because I always want to put this PC back to 98 because that's what it kind of was, you know, intended to, you know, be used for. Um, but we're going to be doing that while also installing another, you know, operating system today, and that is, of course, the Windows 98 UBCD. I'm going to probably call it the Ultimate Boot CD many times throughout this video. I don't know if, if that's what it's called, but it's called UBCD, so that's what I'm thinking. You know, Ultimate Boot CD, Ultra Boot CD, Useful Boot CD, I don't know. It might be something totally different. Um, but we are, of course, I mean, let me just pan over here to the old, you know, Gateway uh, 98 PC right there. We're going to go ahead and once again uh, put in this CD right here that I have made. So here it is. Uh, this is what it looks like when you, you know, start it up when you already are like booted into a, a version of Windows. So we've got, it calls, you know, obviously calling itself the Windows 98 UBCD 4.8. You have options to launch the apps when you open the readme file. So let's just go ahead and open the readme file to kind of read a little bit about this. The unattended boot CD. Okay, so that's what it's called. Perfect. It says right there. 
what it is, so I'm not going to be calling it the Ultimate Boot CD anymore. The Unintended Boot CD for Windows 98, second edition, version 4.8. Uh, it tells these, this is the, you know, email of the person who made it, this is his uh, page on uh, MSFN, and he says, okay, what is this CD? This is a pretty good replacement to your old Windows 98 installation CD. This is an unintended boot CD, UBCD, with more options and, and utilities than you can handle. If, if you ever have to reinstall your operating system, this will do it all for you. That's what uh, the guy Hank was saying in his PM, is that this is a very automated uh, install and that's what he thought was you know very cool about it is I've not really done anything like that before on this channel most of it is you know you have to have some user you know input at some point so this is apparently going to be a very unattended boot CD that does everything for you so set all the options before the setup starts and or create an INF file that will uh, you know set the options for you pretty much um, and yeah so these are all of the features uh, it performs a completely unintended installation of 98 SC um, it apparently, what, yeah, from what Hank was saying also, it actually will format the, uh, the drive automatically. So that could be a very good and a bad thing. Obviously, if you were using this CD and it was fully uh, you know, unattended and everything, you wouldn't want to put it into any PC that has a, you know, like a hard drive that you want to partition or, you know, uh, like actually keep some of the data on it. So, yeah, um, I am very interested to see what this is. You see it says right uh, down here, I hope you use Windows 98 SC for many years to come. I don't know how many people are still using Windows 98 out there, but I'm sure there are a few. So this is apparently going to really enhance uh, the installation process as it's going to make pretty much everything unattended. So, um, yeah, that is pretty cool. Um, as I was... Um, actually downloading this and burning it to well I was originally going to, uh, to copy it to a USB drive um, and a vast on my computer started freaking out and it saw all of these different um, e like exe files and I thought that they were you know all these different types of viruses and you know trojans and droppers and all that so I don't know if this has malware on it um, the guy I, I believe the guy said that there's no malware on it I have no idea um, but it might have been, you know, just like a false positive. I think mo I think one of them was called Keygen, which that usually gets picked up, you know, pretty fast by uh, Avast. So there's probably some sort of, like, installation cracking uh, mechanism on here. If we launch the apps menu, I think this will uh, show you what applications are on here. Oh, launch the post install. Okay, so we're not going to be able to, like, do that now. So I'm just going to go ahead and just reboot, and we'll get right into this. So... Um, we will go ahead and log off of XP Vienna here. I'm going to readjust the camera again. I'm trying to get the absolute best view of this. On this menu right here, it basically says Windows 98 unintended boot CD menu. You have an option to boot from the hard disk or the CD, very much like a regular 98 CD. And this is where you set all, all, all your options in here. So, uh, welcome to the unintended boot CD for Windows 98. You have option one, load optimal device drivers and start the main menu. You can load the standard boot disk drivers, load all available device drivers, check your RAM for errors, partition your hard drive review partition information, uh, set custom options before installing 98, format the first hard drive and start installing Windows, install Windows 98, the hard drive is already formatted. So man, you have a lot of options in here. Um, I am going to see... I mean, I guess option one is kind of the one that, you know, you would probably go for, but we do have to format this drive. I don't know if it's going to, um, I mean, he said, I mean, Hank said that it will automatically start doing it for us. So let's just go ahead and do option one. Load optimal device drives and start the main menu. So we've got some options here. Install Windows 98 10th year anniversary edition. Automatically format the current hard disk and start setup and reinstall. Let's go ahead. I'm going to go with F first. Format the C drive and then return to this menu because I want to see what the 98 10th year anniversary edition. I guess that's the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and press F. You select the format drive C. Are you sure you wish to continue? I mean, really sure? Yes. So it's going to quick format. There we go. And it just brings us right back to the menu. And we're going to go ahead and press I for install. It's found. File is scanned. The system drive is set to C system. So there you go. This is where it kind of shows you what information is. So it shows you that it's going to install to the C drive in the system directory as Windows. And with that product key, it already has put in here. So uh, I guess it kind of grabs all that information for you. And if you have set up a custom installation, if you have set custom installation options, choose N or P. Choose Y to use the file in the CD. Uh, we'll go ahead and use Y to use the file in the CD because that is what we want to use. 
verifying your settings, test for over. So that, this was pretty funny right here because he, he told me that this line right here, test for over one gigs of RAM, uh, is actually supposed to say test for one uh, for over one gig of hard drive space. Um, so apparently whoever made this uh, didn't, you know, like put that you know, little typo in there. So this computer does not have one gig of RAM. It has 192 megabytes of RAM. And that's why he thought it was interesting or going to be interesting if I did it on the 98 computer because it doesn't have one gig of RAM. And he was kind of wondering why that was happening. So, uh, yeah, he actually PM me just before that I started uh, making the video. And, um, yeah, so we're just gonna, uh, gonna go ahead and press uh, S to start installing Windows 98, and we'll see what happens. Let's roll, it says. So it's gonna read some source files here. Okay, so basically what this pre-installation phase has done so far is it's gone through and automatically uh, copied a ton of files from the CD over to the hard drive, I believe. And now it is actually going through and extracting all of the driver packages um, because I did, you know, choose uh, it to load the optimal driver. So it's, it, I haven't touched it since I pressed uh, the I key to install it or, you know, whatever that I last did. Um, it's gone through and, and done all this by itself. So I'm curious to see if we're going to launch into like a regular Windows 98 setup and if we do, if it's going to kind of go through that automatically and if it's going to ask me like for my time zone and for like my username and all that or if that's just going to be put in automatically by this. Um, it sounds like it might be, uh, but you can see what it's doing now is, is, is you know, again, as I said, going through and uh, extracting all of these driver packages and it loaded about four different ones so it's going through and you know going through that process right now and once it finishes with one it says all okay at the bottom uh and then it just goes to the next one so it is going kind of fast um you know if you'd actually see what it's doing but i mean you, you know you, you can see right there uh that it says okay so now it's saying all driver packs have finished ex uh, extracting all files need for setup now starting setup see you soon and now it's okay please wait while setup initializes it looks like we're gonna yeah, so we're booted right into a standard Windows 98 setup. Uh, there's nothing special here. Um, I can still move the mouse around. The only thing with this is it's probably going to take uh, 30 to 60 minutes because this is on real hardware. This is on an actual 98 machine. So uh, I can see it. Okay, setup detection notice. This usually, I guess, wouldn't happen. This is because that I installed uh, a Windows XP, you know, the Windows XP Vienna. I installed that on a partition on here, so it's going to basically let me know, which I don't know how it found the partition, because I thought I wiped the whole drive, but, um, you know, so that's fine. I don't really care about that. So, yeah, you can see it already um, automatically clicked through uh, and is now going to be preparing the directory here. So, um Normally that first thing where I had to like actually say continue normally wouldn't happen so We're gonna see if from here on out if I have to do any more user input or, or if it's just gonna kind of go through this whole setup Yeah, you can see it's just going through it automatically. I did not touch anything there So it went through and it shows I assume it might have been typical Maybe it was complete and it shows all of you know of the like uh, different things that I wanted and it went through, oh, and, and it actually says right here, welcome to the unattended boot CD for Windows 98. So, yeah, they have modified this right here. Um, Windows 98 just got better. No, really, it just did. This CD installs most files from Auto Patcher for Windows 98, and all the others have are, are offered in the post-install apps menu. So, they have modified uh, part of this, which is kind of interesting. So you can see down here, I mean, besides this, so far all of this looks pretty much like a standard Windows 98 setup process. Um, this is you know, how long that it's going to take, so it just says that it's copying its files over. Um, Windows 98 updated to February 2008. This new release includes hundreds of enhancements and new features that originate not from Microsoft, but from the awesome community on MSFN at msfn.org. So uh, yeah, so okay, so it's got Internet Explorer 6, Service Pack 1. So yeah, it's kind of going to tell us uh, some of the features that it has, you know, some of the updated programs. Um, and you can tell that, you know, that this is kind of old because it says that IE5 just doesn't cut it for the modern web. Well, IE6 doesn't either, but this is from, you know, February 2008. So uh, Internet Explorer 6 at that time was somewhat, of, you know, of a good, you know, browser to use. Um, unofficial, okay, so this is cool. So you can now use hard drives over 137 gigs 
which was previously a limitation on Windows 98. So I don't have an a uh, I think th I think this computer has an 80 gig hard drive, which is not factory by any means. That was just um you know like a hard drive that I had lying around that just happened you know to be like an IDE hard drive that would fit in here. So um, yeah, that, that's not factory. Uh, unofficial fix for copying files over 2 gigs in Windows Explorer. There's a limitation in the original code where files larger than 2 gigs are not handled properly. If you try to copy a file over 2 gigs, it will not work. This update fixes the problem. So it looks like they've, they've definitely gone through and, and patched uh, a lot of the, um, I guess, limitations that would make it to where you couldn't really use this uh, in 2008 or in, you know, like the modern day, which... I don't know how many people are still using this in like the modern day because it's a super old uh, version of Windows, but um, so it has a native USB um, to provide native support for USB flash drives, digital photo and video cameras and other. Okay, so updated Windows components, Windows installer version 2, network setup wizard, nothing to see here moving right along. So yeah, that's... Oh, I guess, yeah, it's kind of going by fast now. Version of Explorer, okay, there's an unofficial Windows Explorer. Yeah, it's kind of going by pretty fast. I can't really read a whole lot of it. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and just pause this uh, this video right now, and um, I will come back once we are at, you know, the next portion of the setup, you know, when, like, something else interesting happens. Because um, this is probably going to take 23 minutes, like it says, and it's, I, I assume it's going to go through. I mean, if it did that first part and it was all uh, all automated, it's probably going to do all the rest of this part of the setup, you know, fully automatically. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video here, and I will come back uh, once it is finished. All right, so we are back. Uh, we have uh, gone a little bit more into the setup. It actually did not take 20 minutes at all. And you can see now it's doing some automated scripts. It actually has over here on the right side of the screen this, like, a small little command prompt window that's way off the screen, but it's just on the screen enough to say installing updates right there. Um, but you can see that, you know, this isn't 100% normal. There are a couple of things in here that are different. Windows Media Player 9, uh, tuning up application to start these items in here are a little bit different. Um, so, yeah, uh, it did not take 20 minutes. Like I said, it took more about like 10 minutes and... It said it was going to take like 20 to 30, so now we're done with that, and now it's saying it's going to take 10 minutes. And the hard drive, or the floppy drive, is making a rapid ticking noise. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that. I, don't, I, I think that's the hard drive, because right? there's nothing in the floppy drive right now. So, uh, I hope the hard drive isn't like dying or anything, uh, but yeah so i'm just gonna let this finish up here it seems to be doing you know what it's supposed to be doing and see that we're getting the hourglass okay so the ticking stopped and there's a couple more windows that are kind of you know rapidly popping up and going away um so yeah it's doing system updates right now you see it's uh, like system updates in 104 so it's uh installing some of those unofficial updates that they were talking about uh in the messages beforehand so yeah, uh, I'm probably just going to go ahead and, you know, if it doesn't finish up in like five minutes here, I'll just go ahead and, you know, pause the video once again, and uh, I'll come back once we are, in, you know, at the next portion of the setup. Alrighty, we're back once again, and uh, the setup has now finished. It is now asking us to restart the computer again, so it's I'm going to, you know, just go ahead and let it do that, and uh, we're going to see what happens. It was for a while stuck on, like, that it was going to take one minute, um, like, to do everything, so it finally got past that now. And let's just see what happens next. I assume we're going to boot right up into the desktop, but I wonder if it's going to have like that phase where it goes through and installs um, like a bunch of those unofficial, you know, like the patches and all those programs and everything. So uh, we're at the unintended boot CD menu, so I'm just going to let it time out and boot from the hard disk. And now it's going to go through all the hardware that it's found. Uh, it's, hopefully this won't take super long. Okay, so here it's not going to automatically go through this for us. We're going to uh, actually have to go through and press enter and search for the driver. Uh, most of this stuff it can find, yeah, you know, just like a regular monitor. I don't have, like, the proper monitor driver for this, so uh, we're just going to have to let it, you know, use the uh, generic one there. And I wonder, I actually wonder if that's going to affect uh, some of, like, the, you know, wallpapers and stuff. Hopefully it won't. Hopefully it'll, you know, work um with the uh default driver okay so it's uh, changed the desktop wallpaper and it's popped up with this uh choice program here and it's saying uh ubcd is about to start system updates two of four press f1 finish or just wait 99 seconds or q to quit 
with resume option. So I didn't have to press F there, it, it would have just timed out after uh, 99 seconds, so, um, but I just kind of wanted to, you know, speed it up a little bit. So, uh, you can see it's that the, like, the uh, actual title of the window is changing a lot, it's uh, t kind of telling you what command that it's doing, so it's got all of those um, hotfixes, you know, like the KB, blah blah blah, .exe files, as you can see right up here. Um, mouse was moving very slow there for a second but so it's automatically installing you see it's got windows media set up down here uh, the mouse is kind of lagging i guess because it's just you know doing so much um so yeah so far i mean besides with this window it looks like a very you know vanilla windows 98 uh, installation except for uh there was this icon oh now that icon's gone um but we still have uh, ie5 and Outlook express 5 i can tell by those icons so Probably in here, it's going to um, install those and you know kind of update those for us. All right, so we have kind of skipped ahead here a little bit. Uh, I'm now in the like portion where it's going to be installing the post setup applications. Um, so this is where it is kind of going through and installing a lot of those third party programs. It's, it's already gone through parts three and four of all of those like drivers and updates. Um, and it was really doing a lot of stuff that I couldn't really show on video because it was just at the screen and a bunch of windows kept flashing. So, um, this we've already got a couple things happening. It already installed 7-Zip before that I restarted this recording. It installed 7-Zip and a fonts package. So now it's installing, okay, Mozilla Firefox. You, you can see what I'm talking about up here. This is where it's like showing you what it's doing. Okay, so it's now installing uh, the uh, Nero suite of applications, which is like a burning suite where you, know, you can kind of like burn music and videos and stuff to a CD. So it's installing that. Uh, yeah, it's already installed a lot of stuff. It's got, as I said, 7-Zip, a fonts package, Firefox, some other stuff that was going too fast so I couldn't read it. And yeah, it's doing this all autom you know, automatically. I'm not having to tell it what to do or you know, press next or anything. So it's doing this all by itself. So it is now on this uh, screen right here. It has installed this program called uh, XYplore, Xyplore. Um, this is the like unofficial or like the updated uh, Windows Explorer that it was talking about. Um, and it's saying it's stuck on the screen that says it's finished installing, but you can see it's a it's a 30 day trial version. So I'm curious to see if it's going to keep it a 30-day trial or if it's going to like go ahead and crack it somehow. Um, but I'm literally like locked up. I can't do anything with any of these windows. I could still open like the start menu and stuff. But you can see just how many programs that that it has already installed. We've got you know 7-Zip. We've got C Cleaner, CD Check, Cute PDF, FFD Show, Foxit Reader, G Spot, Infra. I mean you know Firefox, Nero, all of these things. We've got VLC. We've got WinRAR. I mean, there's a ton of stuff. All this installed automatic. Oh yeah, that's definitely. <laughs> this is definitely screwed up here. You can see that all those windows, you know, all, all those pop-outs stayed open. Um, yeah, so something's definitely, something's definitely screwed up here. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and let it work itself out, hopefully, and we'll see if it, you know, kind of like comes back uh, from it being, you know, hung here, you know, like fr frozen. So. Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll just you know keep the camera uh, on and just see what happens. All right, so it has been stuck at this screen for I'd say about 15 minutes now. So I assume it's not really uh, going to move past this. I think it's just kind of you know locked up here. Um, so I'm gonna see if we can restart here and see uh, if it automatically picks back up where it left off or um, if it is just gonna be totally screwed up. I have no idea. I don't even know if it's gonna go ahead and restart. And of course we have a Microsoft scan disk uh, coming up here. It's going to go ahead and check the drive because I did do a force shutdown. Um, it's obviously not going to find anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I am not sure what really happened there. You know, why that it like, you know, kind of hung up there. I don't have the proper drivers for this, so I'm sorry that it kind of looks a little bit weird. Yeah, you can see it's got this pretty cool theme here. Um, it's not going ahead and coming up with that window again. Um, and yeah, this is just because I don't have like the proper like the proper drivers for this. Um, so it's not going to really like the, you know display it the way that it should be. But this theme you can see kind of looks like a Windows Vista theme. Um, this is where that you know th this is where they're doing it inside of a, like of a VM would make it look a little bit better. Um, at the end here because I would have the proper drivers for that, but 
I'm gonna go ahead and run this and see if we can run that uh, post uh, installation menu thing launch the apps menu because I want to see what else was supposed to install so yeah this is okay so this is kind of the Windows post install wizard from WPIW.net so you see we've got all this stuff here that some of it did install uh, we've got CCleaner uh, HDD regenerator tune. I mean, we've got a ton of stuff here. It failed on installing XY Plorer. That's what it failed at doing. Uh, let's go ahead and yeah, select defaults. Let's just go ahead and you know do the defaults. So we want to go ahead and do the the defaults here, and we'll begin install. And yeah, so now it's going to go ahead and set up all of this stuff. So I'll go ahead and let it do this and see if it fails again, because it, it literally went through all of this here. It got to, I mean, like this whole interface didn't come up before, but it got to uh, XY Plur or whatever, you know, however you, that you pronounce that. Um, and it failed, you know, that's where, you know, that it hung and it didn't do anything else. So uh, yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and pause it here once again, and I'll come back once it's finished with this. So we're back on the desktop here, and it did finish the, I don't know why it keeps right clicking, but um, it did finish the like whole unofficial program, or not unofficial program, but the uh, like third party program uh, setup thing. There were a couple of ones that failed to install, but you can kind of see that we do have a few new icons down here. I don't know if it updated uh, Internet Explorer to version 6, but we're gonna find out. Oh yes it did, I mean, you can see right there version 6.0. Uh, so we have that, so, so uh, that is pretty nice. I assume uh, Outlook Express is going to be the same thing. You can see it keeps coming up with these, um, you know, this program performed an illegal operation and will be shut down. It's it, it, it did this during, and now it's just literally not closing. Kernel32.dll. I have no idea why this keeps coming up, but I literally can't even get out of it now. So. Yeah, something tells me this didn't really install correctly. I mean, we do have all of these programs in here, though. Uh, so, you know, we've got 7-Zip, uh, the, you know, Accessories, C-Cleaner. We have a pretty old version, I assume. CD Check. I mean, all these versions of these programs are going to be from, like, 2008. Is like, the max, you know, like, the highest version that, that they're going to be. Because this uh, was compiled in 2008. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately... It didn't really install as well as I thought it was going to, and plus I can't really demonstrate any of the themes or anything. Um, I guess we can go in and see kind of... Yeah, you can see this is supposed to be... Man, this thing does not want to get out of the way. This wallpaper is supposed to be that Longhorn background um, in the screenshot that he sent me at the beginning of the video. Um, but we've got a, a ton of new wallpapers here, as you can see. Um, some of these are the same, but like... I think, yeah, Longhorn 4 or 4006, um, Renov Renovation 98, uh, Tnet, Tnet XP, Vista Ultimate Black, Windows, I mean, so we got some new wallpapers, we'll just go ahead and set this to one of the default ones that came in Windows 98, uh, screen savers, um, nothing really special at all there, um, and yeah, these are, so we've got all these different themes here, I can't even really demonstrate these either, because um, I mean, you can see that, that the theme kind of shows up, but it doesn't really work. Um, but we've got a, a, a ton of new themes. Um, and yeah, we are very limited to what we're doing. We can only do uh, up to 16 colors. And that's not the like the operating system's fault at all. That's just because I don't have the proper you know display driver for this. Um, so that's honestly probably going to end off this video right here. Yeah, I'm uh, unfortunately, we're not going to get to take a you know, look like an in-depth look at all of these programs and the themes and stuff, but that's just because of you know, it's on this computer. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, end this video off here. I just want to thank you guys uh, so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe down below um, if you want to see more videos like this in the near future. Also, if you want to, go ahead and leave me a comment down below, you know, uh, letting me know what, you know, that you think of this, if you think that you would use this now or back in 2008. Um, as your daily use operating system, which I would not, you know, highly recommend now, but I don't know, maybe back a few years ago for like an older computer, maybe this could make a lot of sense. But anyway, guys, I just want to thank you again so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.